Yeah, the title's not clickbait. The Legend Dale of Detroit Urban Survival Training. The most dangerous man on earth. Detroit's Batman. The only guy that could disarm God himself. Visited our warehouse to teach us the techniques in person. I've made a lot of videos joking about his content and criticizing the techniques. Most recently, we even tried them ourselves to see if they worked. And he saw this video and... He was more than willing to come to the warehouse, and he can take a joke, which I very much appreciate and have the utmost respect for. And I just wanted to make this video here just to debrief, because this is right after we finished filming everything and going over all of the things that he's preached and showed, all of the, you know, disarms, the escapes, how to make your attacker not only lose their weapon, but also suck your dick, you know, all kinds of like wild techniques. We tried them all. So I just wanted to quickly give you my thoughts on everything after surviving Dale's hurricane jutsu firsthand. You know, have I been converted? Have I seen the light? My third eye opened. Is Dale the messiah, the bulletproof chosen one? All of this was filmed and recorded and it's going to be no sly trick editing or anything to make him look better or worse. Of course, all of this was mainly just for fun. So we were goofing around a little bit and Dale understood that and he was down to get silly with us. However, at points we did want to genuinely try the techniques and fundamentals that he preaches, put them to the actual test. So at, we did go at full speed, like real time, and it got physical. Like, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there is a point where, playing out through a whole scenario, Caleb was simulating an attacker after being disarmed and fighting back. Caleb picked up Dale and took it to the ground, and the scuffle continued as it would in the real world in a situation like we simulated. <laughs> This is adorable. He's going full wrestling. Because, like I said, we wanted to see, does it actually work in any capacity? It was myself, Caleb, and Rex Gunderson. Caleb and I have no professional training whatsoever. Rex Gunderson, however, he's a real wild card. For his line of work, he is professionally trained in both defense, firearms, attacking, disarming, pretty much the whole shebang. I'm not trying to like, you know, give everything about him away or any of his personal details. I'm not going to fucking show you his report card or anything. But for his actual profession, he undergoes intense training and is a professionally trained and licensed individual in all of these fields. And I wanted him to be there to test it and see what he thought of everything. I wanted to make sure everything was covered to get it as thorough as possible. So that video is going to be posted five hours from now, 7 p.m. EST. But I wanted to make this before that goes up just to give you my thoughts on everything immediately after it. So first of all, Dale himself is an extremely positive and wholesome guy. He was like extremely fun to be around and a genuinely just nice person. Initially, I was under the impression that he was just selling bullshit, that he didn't actually believe in it. But I get the impression, as did all of us, that he truly believes in the things that he teaches and is extremely passionate about it as well. He lives and breathes the program and truly believes that through these techniques and his uh, guide that it is helping people in his community. And I think that was refreshing to see. It's not like an NFT crypto bro scam who knows that their JPEG of a monkey wearing a hat is worthless, but still tries to pretend that it's not in order to make money off of it. This is a guy who really believes through his background that the things he is teaching and his program, as well as the people that go out uh, from his facility to monitor the streets, is doing a good service to the community. I think there's something to be said for that. I think there's genuine merit in these dust operatives, and just even saying that sounds like some shit out of an anime, but these dust operatives patrolling neighborhoods in order to help deter criminals. I think there is an actual argument to be made that that is an extremely helpful service. You know, of course they're not John Wick. They're not gonna be able to pop out of the fucking Hummers and defuse every situation and kung fu someone to death in order to save the community. But just having them patrolling and just being on alert for those neighborhoods, I imagine, is a great breath of fresh air for the residents, as well as a probably pretty effective deterrent. Because the more activity in an area, the less likely someone is to just fucking pull out a gun and rob someone in broad daylight, right? So I do think that there is a genuine argument to be made there for that being a very helpful service. And now to go more specific on the actual training fundamentals themselves. 
Every video I've made talking about Detroit Urban Survival Training, I have always said that this self-defense advice will get you killed. And after experiencing it firsthand, I still do believe that for the average ordinary person, trying these techniques in the wrong situation is going to get you executed and sent straight to fucking Valhalla, banished to the Shadow Realm. However, Dale himself was extremely impressive. This man is like an actual dangerous weapon, and I really enjoyed spending the day with him. And in the scenarios we played out, granted they were very controlled in specific circumstances, the things that he demonstrated were a lot more effective than I thought they'd be. But that doesn't change my perspective on act like how efficient they would be for a normal person to try. 99% of people aren't some emotionless sociopath that's going to be able to keep their calm, keep their cool in a life or death situation. They're going to be panicking, they're going to freeze, they're going to fuck things up, and if they try and use these techniques, they'll probably get shot going for it because, again, no one, uh, no ordinary person is mentally trained to handle something that intense. So even if they have like the best self-defense advice in the world, in an actual situation, they'll never be able to use it without years of training. Now, of course, Dale does make a point to say that you should always try and comply with your attacker's demands because whatever they want isn't worth your life, which is the right advice. That is the right thing to do. Dale says that the things he teaches should never be like your first line of defense, you know? Someone just comes up to you and says, hey, buster, and you just start fucking using Dale's Forbidden Jutsu on him. He always says that his techniques are meant to be the absolute last resort. You know, if, if you feel like this person is going to hurt you no matter what, then trying his techniques. Now, Dale did concede if the attacker is standing far back, you're just going to get shot if you try and, like, rush at them. You are still going to get shot. But no matter what, from that distance, there's not a lot you can do besides just comply or try and, like, run away laterally. He's not trying to, like, make it seem like you're Mr. Fantastic who could stretch over there and grab the barrel. He himself will say when your attacker with a firearm is far away or, like, out of arm's reach, there's not much more you can do besides, you know, maybe lunge at them and take one bullet be for trying to wrestle the gun away or testing your luck running away in like a lateral pattern to make it a harder shot for them. He also mentioned something I talked about where most people aren't going to have the gun straight out at you. So like the people that have the gun like for example the example he gave is like when someone's just robbing you and trying to make it a secret because not many people want to advertise like hey I'm robbing this guy look at my gun I've got him at gunpoint. Most people are going to have the gun very close to their chest very close to them maybe even like in like a like a pocket. So when they get like right up on you like this Again, there's not a whole ton you can do from that position, which he himself tells you. Like, there's not a whole lot you can really do when it's there. You can't really see the gun. No one around you can really see the gun, so a bystander can't really help you. And, you know, you can't make a quick sudden move because he's too close for you. You'd have to, like, somehow create some space somehow in order to, like, get control of the gun. So that whole situation just, it, you can't really do much. And then he also mentioned if someone just wants to shoot you dead you're kind of fucked, like full-blown Bonnie and Clyde. They're not going to get close enough for you to try and, like, touch the gun, attack them or anything. They're just going to start shooting at you from, like, a decent distance away. And you just can't do anything there. Everything Dale teaches all assumes a perfect scenario where the distance is correct, where you can get some hands on them, like they're in your titties but not too close, and they're pretty much fully extending their arm, or at least extending far enough away from their body where you could perhaps make a move to overpower them. Dale himself has a legitimate military background, and from what I understand, some of what he teaches is does have basis. It is sound to a certain level especially when it comes to getting offline, which of course is getting out of the way of the gun's, you know, line of sight and grabbing the barrel. Uh, one thing I learned during this whole thing, and I want to make this clear, I don't think any of what Dale has taught will ever be successfully employed by a normal person, but Dale in particular, it was surprisingly effective when he did it. So back to what I was saying, like once the barrel was caught by Dale or one of us, I didn't realize just how much control they had over your entire body at that point. They were able to like make me do the YMCA, I could do that to them even though they were stronger. Once that barrel was grabbed, you did have a lot of control over that person. And like I said, we were legitimately trying to like shoot him and fight back and stuff. And of course, we got shots in. It's not 100% effective, he doesn't claim it is either, but it was much more effective than I thought it would be. So getting offline and grabbing that barrel, yeah, it was really hard to get control back. And another thing that I never really stopped to think about when watching and making fun of Dale's content is as a robber, as the attacker, you're never going up to your victim expecting them to fight back. No one's coming up to you with a gun to your face with this 
thought in the back of their head preparing for the worst case scenario like wow what if this guy was trained by dale senpai no one's expecting you to do some like action movie disarm on them they're coming up to you with a gun thinking you're gonna shit your pants and you'll do whatever they say as an attacker when i'd pull the gun on dale and i'd tell him what i want i want your money your wallet your keys give me your tax forms do you have any panties in your back pocket that i can have while i'm going over my demands if he made a move during that i'd have to react to it and try and shoot him and it was really hard to do that Yes, I'd get him like one or two times, but the majority of the time, he would take that gun barrel and I'd very much struggle to get control back. And it was the same with Rex and Caleb. Like I said, wasn't perfect. We did still shoot him sometimes, but we also knew that a disarm was coming. I think there is a little bit of weight to the statement Dale makes where in the real world, if someone's coming up to you with a gun to rob you, their intention is robbery. They're, they're thinking... What do I want to take from this person? How am I going to get away? This and that. They're not thinking like, I'm going to need to dodge soon because this guy is going to go for like some kind of Jason Statham level disarm. They're not there with that expectation. They're there to rob you. And that's all they're really thinking about. Not expecting some kind of flashy fucking disarm technique. So when that does happen, it would be hard for them to react. And I want to reiterate one more time. I don't think any of these techniques will ever be successfully employed by someone who isn't thoroughly trained. I don't think just someone that watches the content, takes a class or two, will ever be able to actually do them. Not only because they have to be done like perfectly and very fast, but also because the intensity of a life or death situation is going to make most people freeze or forget most things and it's just going to get them shot if they tried. These were very controlled situations and Dale himself has legitimate training so he's very good at doing these things especially to the untrained like Caleb and I. It really wasn't easy to actually shoot this guy or stab this guy in the situations and circumstances that we simulated. Now of course it's not 100% effective and I don't think he's ever preached that it is because we did still shoot him and stab him a couple of times in the simulation because obviously that was going to happen. But there's one more big thing I want to focus on real quick. All of the scenarios we played out to me seem a bit unrealistic. Dale made a very in-depth explanation for how they do occur in the real world. And of course, I'm not an expert, but they just don't really seem realistic to me. All of our scenarios where the assailant is like putting the gun to someone's chest, putting it to their head, like directly touching them with the barrel or very close to it. Whereas to me, I imagine in the real world, the attacker would want distance between themselves and the victim. So instead of like going up to someone, putting it to their fucking temple like it's a, a goddamn, you know, action movie, saying, hey, put the, put the wallet in my hand, I feel like in the real world, maybe back far, where you can't touch them, they'd just be like, hey, take out your wallet and set it on the ground. None of the scenarios we did were in that situation because Dale admits you'd just get shot there if you tried. So we have played out all of these where it's like super close with the gun on them and it just, to me, doesn't seem like that ever actually happened. Those are the only scenarios where Dale's advice can even really be used. And in those controlled situations, those unrealistic scenarios, his advice was pretty effective. Like it was definitely more effective than I thought it would be even in those situations. But again, I just don't see that happening in the real world. I'm not an expert. Dale could very well be right and those are pretty common when it comes to robberies, like that distance and, you know, putting the gun right on someone, I don't know. It just, to me, seems a bit unrealistic. I also learned just how painful it is when a gun is being moved with your finger on the trigger. I, I'm not lying when I say there was three or four times where I was convinced my finger was about to break or my shoulder was going to pop out of its socket. The amount of control you have over a gun from its barrel blew me away. I had no clue it would actually be that impressive. Now I did heavily shit on that whole getting offline train of thought where I was just saying, you know, if you just dodge, I'll move my gun a little bit. You don't really get that far away. But in real speed, it was very fucking hard to react to that because I'm not a human aim bot. I didn't know where Dale was going or when or anything like that. And I knew he was going to try. So I imagine in the real world would be even longer to react to. But that whole getting offline while hitting the barrel or grabbing it, like it was hard for me to react every time and shoot him. Again, I would get him a few times, but it was still a lot more difficult than I ever expected it to be. Then keep in mind, it wasn't just me. All three of us tried this and we were trying to go like a real world situation. The main thing I critiqued in all of Dale's content is the people he does this on stand still like they're mannequins. We tried to move and jump around and everything to make it very real world, but once you lose that upper hand and that barrel got into Dale's fucking meaty paws, it was super tough to take it back because your finger is in where the trigger is and it is so goddamn painful. So when you're bouncing back and moving around, your finger is constantly just getting torn apart. 
and it, it really was a lot more difficult than I expected. But again, it have to be under the perfect conditions and the person, the victim, would have to somehow be able to keep their heart rate down enough to actually execute these the right way without giving themselves a heart attack beforehand. However, after experiencing Dale's wrath firsthand, I can say with 100% certainty, he is the worst target for a robbery. You could come at this man with five machine guns and 15 katanas and somehow he'd wrestle them all away from you. The man is just a walking apocalypse. Now, as I mentioned, Rex is professionally trained and he actually did corroborate at least some of what Dale was talking about when it came to some of the disarms that he showed. But as Rex also agrees, no one will ever be able to successfully pull it off without years of training. So while some of the disarm techniques he teaches aren't fundamentally bullshit, they're also not applicable to a normal person. It would take years of mental and physical training to actually be able to pull them off in a real situation. And even the situation where you could even try is extremely rare. It's kind of unrealistic to expect the perfect distance and the perfect attacker who's like fully locking out their elbows and stretching out their gun. It just it doesn't feel like it would ever be something that a normal person would ever be able to do. Also, when it came to like the eyeball stuff, very, 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 very painful, as you would expect. I think that's definitely more painful than a nut shot. I, in the videos, I said, why even go for the eyes when you just hit them in the nuts? I, I am 100% believer in the eyes for sure now is the most effective place to target when it comes to a real world situation where you need to get somebody off you. Going right for their eyes, wow. I couldn't believe how awful that experience was. So, yeah, again... I haven't changed my belief that a normal person watching the videos or even taking one or two classes will ever be able to actually use these unless they also have the mental fortitude or even the mental training to remain calm under pressure and execute them. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.